Dr. Keerthi is working as assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry, Anna University, Chennai. She finished her UG and PG from Government Victoria College, Palakkad. She completed her MPhil from Loyola College, Chennai with gold medal and PhD from Anna University. Her main areas of research area are membrane technology in wastewater treatment and nanocomposites for energy application. She has published more than 12 papers in national and international peer-reviewed journals of high repute. She has presented more than 5 papers in international and national conference. She has received research projects from DSG for more than 43 lakhs under Women Scientist Scheme and Technology System Development. She has 6 years of experience in research and teaching in chemistry polymer science and environmental science. Welcome to UGC lecture series on polymer science. Since few lectures we have been dealing with the characterization methods of polymers in which we have been dealing with the most important uh, characterization method which is uh, spectroscopy and uh, in the last few sessions we have seen what is spectroscopy, how electromagnetic radiations interact with matter and what that process is known as spectroscopy. And in the last class we have uh, dealt with uh, the difference between atomic and molecular spectroscopy and we stopped at sh by showing you the spectra of basic atomic and molecular spectroscopy in which we see what is the thing which we expect and what we get. So, in this content we would be in this lecture, the contents of this lectures would be, first one we would be dealing what are the factors which causes the width of the spectral lines and also in this session we would be discussing what are the different factors which depends, which causes the intensity of the spectral line. We would be discussing in detail what are the factors which gives the width of the spectral lines as well as the intensity of the spectral lines. So, in the last session we have seen that the spectrum of an atom or a molecule undergoing a change would look how in real it would look like and what we expect. So, in this slide you can see that this is the spectrum which we would expect that is the detector output versus frequency. We would expect a line spectrum. Whereas, in the actual case, we would see that this is the actual spectrum which we get. Here you can see a little broadening in the peak. Whereas, in the case of real matter, we would expect a line spectrum. So, what are the reasons for this line broadening? We would see in few slides. So, this is the spectrum of an atom or a molecule undergoing a single transition that is which would be an ideal spectrum and this is the actual appearance of the spectrum that is how the line spectrum has been broadened. So, we would be dealing with what are the reasons for the broadening of the line spectrum and how the intensity of the spectrum varies and what are the reasons for the intensity of the spectrum as well as what are the reasons for the uh, broadening of the spectrum. So, width of the spectral line. Now, width of the spectral line is governed by two factors. First one is known as natural line width and the second factor which is the reason for the width of the spectral line is the resolving power of the instrument. So, what is natural line width? Natural line width is the width inherent in the transition between the atomic and molecular energy levels which cannot be precisely determined. Thus, if you say it in a precise manner, it is the minimum width which cannot be made sharper even with the instruments of highest resolving capability. Let me tell you what natural line width is. It is the minimum width which cannot be made sharper even with the instruments of highest resolving capability. Now, in the case of natural line width, it is the width of the spectrum which would be inherent with the system even if you use a maximum resolving power instrument. Let me give you a real lifetime example. Consider a classroom which has a perfect teacher. That means the instrument, if we consider the class as an instrument, the teacher would be 
the perfect, if you consider the teacher to be perfect, that means the instrument has the highest resolving power. So, what we would expect with this classroom when the teacher is perfect is that the whole students of the class should give 100 percent result. That means, if the teacher is perfect, the students should be able to perform really well or they should get full 100 percent marks. But if you see in the real case, we would see that there is a deviation from this. That means, all the students will not get full marks and we will have a different scenario. That is the natural line width. Even if the teacher is perfect and is delivering her, her or his lectures perfectly and if she is able to give you the concepts correctly, we would expect that the students would grasp the concepts very well and will give full marks. But that is not the real case. You will see that there is a small change in the scenario. That means the students will are not able to gain the full marks. That is the natural line width. That means that is the natural tendency of the students to get less marks. So, even if you use a highest resolution instrument, the spectrum will not be of line spectrum. It would be, there would be a small width in the spectral lines. So, this is known as natural line width. I hope you have understood that the natural line width is the minimum width which cannot be made sharper even with the instruments of highest resolving capability. So, in this graph if you see this is the natural line width. As I told you we would expect the spectrum of the particular molecular transition to be line but in the real manner you can see there is a small width in the spectrum. So, this may be due to two reasons. First one is the natural line width and the second one is the resolving power of the instrument. So, as I have told you what natural line width is, it is the minimum width that a particular spectrum would give even if you use a highest resolving power instrument. Now, what are the different reasons for natural line width? This also we have to consider. Even though the spectrum has natural line width, there may be a lot of reasons why this particular spectrum has a natural line width. There are three reasons for natural line width out of which the first one is collision broadening. Collision broadening occurs due to small changes in the energies of atoms and molecules as they collide with each other during their random motion in vapor and liquid state. Let me repeat this to you. The first reason for the natural line width is collision broadening and collision broadening occurs due to small changes in the energies of atoms and molecules as they collide with each other during their random motion in the vapor and liquid state. Now, consider a system with lots of molecules. Now, we know that the molecules are in random motion and they collide with each other. When they collide with each other, there is a transfer of energies from one molecule to the other. So, we will not have the same type of energies for all the molecules in a system. Because of collision with each other, they can transfer the energy from a higher energy molecule to a lower energy molecule. So, we will not get a uniform energy levels in all the molecules in a particular system. So, that may cause a natural line width. That is, there is no uniform energies in the molecules or atoms. If you say molecules in the case of molecular spectroscopy and if you say atoms in the atomic spectroscopy, the atoms or molecules will not have the same energies. They will collide with each other because of their random motion in vapor state or liquid state and they will transfer their energies from higher energy molecules or atoms to lower energy atoms or molecules. So, there will not be any uniformity in the energies. Now, the energy in the liquid state would be more when compared to the vapor state. The collision broadening would be higher in liquid state rather than the vapor state. Now, it is very evident in the liquid state, the molecules are little closely packed than the vapor state. 
So, in the case of liquid state, there is more probability of collisions between molecules or atoms, whereas in the vapor phase, the atoms have more space. So, the collision between these two would be less probable. So, in the case of liquid state, the collision broadening, the natural line width due to collision broadening would be higher, whereas in the case of vapor phase, the natural line width broadening due to collision broadening would be less. As I have told you in liquid state, the molecules or atoms would have more collision probability than the vapor phase because of its random motion. So, in the case of liquids, the collision broadening would be more, whereas in the case of vapor phases, the collision broadening would be less. So, the first reason I have told you that the collision broadening is the first factor which affects the natural line width. Now, here also if you see in the case of a real classroom scenario, you can see that you will have a lot of friends in your class. One friend would be a very high studious student, whereas the other would be less studious student. But when they interact with each other, when they sit together, the high studious student can give away his knowledge to the lesser studious student and they can interact. So, their energies would differ. So, in this way also there is a change in the energy levels of the classroom. Similar is the case of atoms and molecules in a system. You can see due to collision broadening there is no uniformity in the energies and there is there is a natural line width in the spectrum of that particular atomic spectroscopy or molecular spectroscopy. Now, the second reason for natural line width is Doppler broadening. The second reason for natural line width is Doppler bro broadening which occurs due to Doppler shift of transition frequencies. In gas and liquid phases, the random movement of the particles causes a shift in the absorption and emission frequencies to higher as well as lower frequencies and the hence the spectral line is broadened. Let us see once again Doppler broadening is due to the Doppler shift of transition frequencies and in the case of gas and liquid phases, the random movement of the particles causes a shift in the absorption and emission frequencies to higher as well as lower frequencies and hence the spectral line is broadened. Now, in smaller classes you would have heard what a Doppler effect is. You can see in small classes you would have been told about the Doppler effect. That is when a train comes to a platform, when the train is farer away, the sound coming or the siren from the train would you would listen in a lesser frequency. Whereas, when the train comes to near to the platform, you hear the sound waves in a higher frequency, even though the frequency of the sound wave is the same. That is the cyan, siren which is coming in the same frequency, you hear it in a different frequency. That is when the train is farer or it is when it is approaching the platform, you listen it with a lesser frequency and when it reaches the platform, the same siren you listen with a higher frequency. That is the Doppler effect. Now, how do you apply this Doppler effect into a system of atoms and molecules? Now, in a spectroscopic methods, you have a detector. That means it detects whatever the radiation is coming out of the system after absorption. If you have a system which is absorbing electromagnetic radiation, we will have a detector outside the sample chamber to detect whatever the radiation is coming out after absorption. So, we need to find out how much the particular sample has absorbed. Now, that detector would see a molecule which is nearer to it in a different frequency, whereas it will see the other molecules which is farer away from the detector with a different frequency. So, the, the frequency, the molecule would have the same energy and the same frequency, but with the which the detector detects would be different. The detector, when the molecules are nearer to the detector, 
it may detect it with a higher frequency whereas when it is farther away it may detect it with a lower frequency. The same Doppler effect can be applied here. Now if you can see the real classroom scenario the same way if you consider a teacher who is perfect and is giving away her lectures in a perfectly manner you would see all the studio students would sit in the front bench whereas all the back benchers who are not interested in the class would go and will sit in the back bench or they are known as the back benchers. So the frequency with which the teachers teaches reaches the front benches front bench students in a greater manner whereas the back benches would listen it with a lesser frequency and hence you can see it in the marks also. The students who are sitting in the front bench would get probably most of the time would get higher marks whereas the students who are sitting at the bank bench and who are not listening to the frequencies of the teachers or whether they are not able to match with the frequencies of the teacher they will get le less marks. So there is a Doppler shift that is the students who are sitting would get higher marks and the students who are sitting at the back and are not able to listen to the lecture would get less marks. So this is a Doppler shift and hence it would cause a broadening in the energies. It will not be of single energy, there would be a broadening in the energies. So same is the case here, if you stake a system of atoms and molecules, due to this detection of frequencies in a different manner, due to its position in the system, it will have a broadening. So the second reason for the natural line width is Doppler broadening which I would like to tell you once again is nothing but which occurs due to Doppler shift of transition frequencies and in the case of gas molecules and liquid phases the random movement of the particles causes a shift in the absorption and emission frequencies to higher as well as lower frequencies and hence the spectral line is broadened. Now the third reason for the natural line width broadening is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. I think you are very well versed with what Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is. Heisenberg uncertainty principle states that the energy levels even in an isolated atom or molecule cannot be determined precisely. You know the statement very well that the energy levels even in an isolated atom or a molecule cannot be determined precisely. Now let me tell you in a real case scenario, if you have a student, even if he is isolated and if you talk to him, we never know when they can get good marks or when they, when they can go to a lower level marks. So it cannot be determined precisely. Similarly, Heisenberg says in the case of an isolated atom or a molecule, the precise energy levels of a molecule cannot be determined and hence he says that if an atom or a molecule exists in an energy state over a period of time which is dt seconds then the energy of that state will be uncertain to an extent of dE delta E and it is given by the equation delta T into delta E is equal to H which is the Planck's constant divided by 4 pi which is approximately equal to 10 raised to minus 34 joule seconds. That is the uncertainty in the energy levels at a particular period of times which we take it as delta T would be around 10 raised to minus 34 joules seconds. So this is what he says that if a molecule or an atom exists in an energy state for a particular period of time that is delta T then the uncertainty in the energy of that particular molecule or atom would be given by this equation which is delta T into delta E is approximately equal to H by 4 pi where H is the Planck's constant and is approximately equal to 10 raised to minus 34 joule seconds. So again if we take a classroom scenario we cannot we can say that the teacher cannot or it can never predict how a student would get marks. Even a studious student would get marks in a different way and a lower uh, student who has a lower IQ may get a higher marks. So we cannot precisely determine how much output that particular students would give. 
So, the same is the case of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle which states that if you take a system even if it is an isolated atom or molecule if we say it is an isolated atom or molecule we would think that we can precisely determine its energy, but that is not the case even if it is an isolated atom or a molecule its energy cannot be determined precisely and the uncertainty can be calculated which is given by the equation. So, these are the three reasons for natural line width as I have told you what natural line width is. Natural line width is nothing which is the inherent line width in a spectral line even if you use the highest resolving power instrument or the highest caliber instrument and the natural line width can happen due to three reasons. First one what the, was the collision broadening which is due to the collision of particles or atoms or molecules with each other and they transfer their energies. So, there would not be a uniformity in the energies and hence there would be a spectral line broadening. The second reason for this was um, Doppler broadening which is due to the Doppler effect or Doppler shift as I have told you the detector would detect the signals in a different manner depending on the position of that particular atom or molecule and hence there would be a broadening in the frequencies of that particular transitions. The third effect was Heisenberg's uncertainty principle which is very well known and it says that the energy of a particular molecule even if it is an isolated atom or molecule cannot be determined precisely and that equation is also given to you. So, these are the three reasons for natural line width. Now, the second reason for natural line width was the resolving power of the instrument. Now, it depends on the design aspect and the efficiency of the components of the optical system and hence the sharpness of the spectral line can be improved. The resolving power it depends on the design aspect and the efficiency of the components which we are using in the optical system and the sharpness of the spectral line can be improved. However, even the instrument with highest resolving power cannot improve upon the natural line width. That is you can say that there is no ideal instrument. That means no ideal instrument can detect the spectral lines with utmost precise and definitely it will not be a line spectrum. There would be a definite broadening in the spectral lines. That means even the instruments with the highest resolving power cannot improve upon the natural line width. So, the natural line width and the resolving power are the two major factors for the width of the spectral lines or there is a broadening in the spectral lines. These are the two important factors. First one is the natural line width and the second one is the resolving power of the instrument. Now, the second uh, important factor that you have to see is the intensity of the spectral lines. Now, the intensity of the spectral line depends on three factors. First one is the magnitude or probability of the transition, second one is the relative population of energy levels and the third one is the concentration and path length of the sample and this would be given by the beer lamberts law. So, the intensity of the spectral line is depending on the magnitude and probability of the transition. Now, in spectroscopy we say that we have seen the Jablonski diagram. Now, you can see that there is a transition from the ground, late, ground level singlet state to higher level singlet states. So, these transitions are allowed according to spectroscopy there are certain selection rules which says that certain transitions are allowed and certain transitions are not allowed. Now, not allowed does not mean that that particular transition does not take place. The transitions takes place but with lower intensity whereas the transitions which are allowed will take place with higher intensity. So, if you remember the Jablonski diagram which we have discussed when we were discussing the energy levels in a molecule you would see that the transition from the singlet ground level to the transition to the singlet highest excited levels are allowed whereas the inter system crossing where you can see there is a 
transition of electrons from the excited singlet state to excited triplet state are not allowed and will happen in a lesser intensity intensity that is why we say that fluorescence will have higher intensity which is an allowed transition which is an allowed emission whereas phosphorescence will have lesser intensity which is not allowed it will happen but which it will be taking place in a lesser intensity so the transition probability decides how much the intensity of that spectral line would be so the magnitude or probability of the transition the second one is the relative population of the energy levels the second one is the relative population of the energy levels now if you see in the atomic spectroscopy or molecular spectroscopy if you need an intense absorption band the population in the ground level should be highest and if you have a more number of electrons in the ground energy levels the intensity of the absorption band that is after the electrons absorbs energy from the electromagnetic radiations and pass into and goes to the excited singlet states that transition would be highly intense because there are more number of electrons in the ground state now if you want an emission spectra the population in the excited energy levels should be high so it, the intensity of the spectral lines in absorption spectra or emission spectra depends on the relative population of electrons in each energy levels so in absorption spectra the ground energy levels should have a higher population of electrons whereas in the case of emission spectra the excited um, energy levels should have higher population of electrons so this is the second factor which decides with the intensity of the spectral lines and the last one is the concentration and path length of the sample which would be given by beer lambert's law according to beer lambert's law it states that the amount of absorbed energy which comes out after absorption from the sample is directly proportional to the path length of the sample as well as it is directly proportional to the concentration of the sample so the beer lambert's law we would be deriving it in the next session and we would discuss in detail how the intensity of the spectral line is directly proportional to the path length of the cell which we would be discussing when we are deriving the beer lambert's law as well as which is directly proportional to the concentration of the sample then it would be a very helpful law in the quantitative analysis that is the intensity would give you the quantitative analysis if we find out what is the concentration of that particular analyte in that particular sample so in the next class we would be dealing with beer lambert's law in detail so with this we summarize our session which in which we have discussed the two important factors of spectral lines first one is the width of the spectral line and the second one is the intensity of the spectral lines and we have seen that the width and intensity of spectral lines in the case of width it is due to the natural line width which is again depending on the collision broadening doppler broadening and the heisenberg's uncertainty principle and the width is again it is responsible the resolving power of the instrument is responsible for the width in the spectral lines and the intensity of the spectral lines we have discussed there are three factors the transition probability the second one is the relative population of electrons and the third one is the beer lambert's law which says that the intensity of the spectral line is directly proportional to the path length as well as the concentration of the sample i hope with this session you should know how the width of the spectral line is happening as well as what are the factors which gives the intensity of the spectral line with this session you should be able to answer these questions what are the causes for width of spectral lines which you can in which you can elaborately discuss the different broadening effects and you can also answer what do you mean by doppler broadening which deals with the doppler shift of the transition frequencies thank you